Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about our November forecast. So I'm releasing this one a couple of days earlier than I normally would, just because there's nothing really going on today. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I would also highly recommend that you check out our very, very exciting and useful Patreon page. And right now, you can actually get it for cheaper than the price of a gallon of milk. That's a very, very good deal right there. Matter of fact, today we're uploading our November snowfall forecast to our Patreon page, so if you want to check that out, link in the description in the pinned comment down below. And if you ever, ever want to cancel, you always can, but I promise you, you're not going to want to, so at least go check it out in the pinned comment and description down below. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, how do you think November is going to go in your area? So let me know what your area is and also how you think it's going to go, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. So let's get right into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at our precipitation forecast, and we're going to get right into where we think the above average precipitation is going to be, and that's for the Pacific Northwest and through the Rockies, and the upper Midwest and portions of the Great Plains as well. This looks to be a very active storm track, and actually it looks to be an active storm track throughout our winter as well. A lot of those storms are going to move on short of the Pacific Northwest, move through the Rockies, either dipping down or going straight through horizontally, and then moving into either the Plains or the Upper Midwest. Oftentimes, this will be in the form of snowstorms as we get colder air to move into these regions. Uh, so if you live there, be on the lookout for that. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at where we could have some moderately above average precipitation, and then we're going to take a look at our below average precipitation as well. Alright, now here's our moderately above average precipitation, and as you can see for Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas, Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin, we're going to be dealing with some moderately above average precipitation, and really this just means we're more confident in that above average precipitation, so a lot of areas in the lighter green could have a lot more above average precipitation, uh, it's just the confidence is a little lower, so it could swing either way. Uh, now, let's go ahead and add our first below average precipitation region, and as you can see, for most of the southern and the eastern United States, we're going to be dealing with some below average precipitation. And I gotta mention, this is very, very normal in a La Nina, because in an El Nino, we typically have above average precipitation throughout all of these regions. So, we 50% of the time, we usually have an El Nino, 50% of the time, we usually have a La Nina, so it comes out around average, but one or the other would mean above or below average precipitation for a lot of the southern United States. And it's mostly due to the fact that there's not an active storm track coming through California, the southern United States, and the eastern United States. It's mostly mostly coming from the Pacific Northwest in through the Rockies and the Plains here. As you can see, this pattern is actually a very just typical La Nina pattern, I would say. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to add our second below average precipitation layer and then we're going to get into the temperature forecast. All right, so here we are taking a look at our moderately below average precipitation and as you can see for California, southern New Mexico, southern Arizona, I could say the southern half of Texas, and then a lot of Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, the panhandle of Florida, and even a tiny bit of Georgia there. We're all going to be dealing with some moderately below average precipitation. And just like with the above average precipitation, this really just reflects what our confidence is like right now at this point. So in the tan shade, we're pretty confident you're going to have some below average precipitation. Not as widespread, but it should be for the most part below average precipitation. This deeper brown shade is really where we feel like there's definitely going to be a setup of some you know, dry conditions and not really an active storm track at all. Actually, quite the opposite. Not really having a storm track at all that goes through there. Now, what we're going to do here is we are going to move on and we're going to take a look at our slightly below average temperature region. So we're going to get right into that temperature forecast. Make sure to stay tuned for the overall forecast as well at the end of this video. Now, here is our slightly below average temperature region. And as you can see for the Pacific Northwest in through the Rockies and in through portions of the upper Midwest and the Plains as well, uh, we're going to be dealing with some slightly below average temperatures throughout that region there. Uh, and this is only going to help further the chances of snowfall throughout the Rockies, as it's going to be a little bit colder. Um, we're going to have some pretty potent cooldowns come through. Uh, and then east of the Rockies, I think there could be some very potent cooldowns that come through that region. So we're going to be on the lookout for that. I'll talk more about that during the overall forecast as well. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at our moderately below average temperature region, and then we're going to get right into the above average temperature regions. And then finally, we're going to follow that up with our exciting overall forecast.
All right, now here is our moderately below average temperature region. And again, this is where we're higher confidence in that below average temperature region. Uh, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas there. Uh, we're all going to be dealing with some more potent cold air. There's going to be frequent cool downs that come through. Uh, and with those low pressure systems that come on shore, it's very common to have uh, some colder temperatures that are associated with those. And I think that's going to be the case quite frequently, actually, throughout this November, as we see an active storm track up there for the Pacific Northwest and through the Rockies and portions of, I would say, the northern plains. All right, now let's get right into our above average temperature region. Uh, so for portions of the southwest, the south central United States, and then the east coast, we're going to be dealing with some slightly above average temperatures here. And we're expecting a southeast ridge to really establish itself over the course of the month of November here. Uh, and you might notice there's an air, a big gap between the cold air and the warm air there. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. So if you live in that region, uh, I'll be kind of explaining that in just a minute. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and take a look at our moderately above average temperature region. So here it is, and as you can see for California, southern Arizona, southern New Mexico, and portions of southern Texas as well, uh, we're a little more confident in that region having some above average temperatures. It's going to be more dry than normal, which means less clouds than normal and less precipitation than normal, uh, which is also going to mean more warmer temperatures than normal. Uh, so those things really go hand in hand, and I think I feel very confident in that region having some above average temperatures there. Uh, and then that EC, I put that over our kind of in-between area. That, that stands for equal chances there. And I really feel like that area could swing either way. Uh, it's very unlikely that we have a region that large have average conditions. So it is going to swing either warmer than normal or colder than normal. Uh, but it's really 50-50 at this point. I would tell you what my opinion is if I had one. Uh, but it is very up in the air at this point, whether you're going to have some maybe slightly colder or slightly warmer conditions. It should be pretty close to normal. Uh, but it could be a little bit colder or a little bit warmer than normal. Uh, and it's, it's like I said, just very 50-50 at this point, whether that's going to be colder or warmer than normal at this point. All right. Now, what we're going to do here is we are going to move on and take a look at that very, very exciting overall forecast for the month of November. I know a lot of you oftentimes wait for that uh, forecast. That's one of the most exciting ones every single month. So I'm very excited to present this to you guys. Now let's get straight into our overall forecast, and we're going to start in the Pacific Northwest like we always do. I don't know why I always start there, but that is where I start, and as you can see, stormy conditions for that turquoise color. You saw that on the precipitation forecast. That should be obvious. I think plenty of storms are going to move through there, uh, and that's also going to create very snowy conditions for the Rockies, and by very snowy, I mean extra snowy than what is usual. Uh, that's my prediction at this point. To the south of there, uh, there's going to be a bit of a ridge. It's going to be warm and dry for the most part, actually, for that region, just because of the fact that the storm track is going to go above you guys. The jet stream just is not going to allow uh, many storm tracks to come through. That's why you will be warm and dry. Uh, now to the east of there, we have a tan color. That's where we have dry. Uh, it shouldn't be too warm. It's going to be uh, probably near normal. Uh, or slightly above normal temperatures, but it's going to be pretty dry, uh, mostly due to the fact that, again, we don't have a storm track coming through the southern United States there, so uh, it's going to be quite dry. To the north of there in our purple region, frigid. I think there could be some very uh, potent cold outbreaks, actually, for this purple region, and that actually goes into the magenta color as well. But the magenta color especially, I think snow is possible. I could see some snowstorms coming through this region. Uh, I really have a feeling that we will get one or two that go through there uh, for sure. Now, for the lakes, we have lake effect snow, and by lake effect, I mean more lake effect than what is normal, which is, you know, it kind of varies from year to year. Some years we have a lot, some years we hardly have any. Uh, I do think we're about to start seeing some. Actually, in a couple of days for the beginning portion of November, we're already going to be seeing some lake effect for some of these regions, uh, and it could be more after that, obviously. Now, for this lighter blue region, cool downs, I think this area is going to be overall near normal or warmer than normal, but there still should be some pretty big cool downs that come through. Uh, that's pretty obvious this time of year. Uh, we frequently have cool downs come through. For the southeast and the mid-Atlantic, we have a southeast ridge that is looking to set up, and we have to have our fingers crossed that that does not last through the entire winter because that would create a very warm and snowless winter for a lot of those regions if that was the case. So we have our fingers crossed that that pattern will break up by the time we're into December, January, or February at least. Uh, and last but not least here for a lot of the northeast in New England, snow. 
Uh, I think we could see some more snow events throughout the month of November. That's when we start to see these come through this region. Uh, we're dealing with one as I speak right now. Snowfall is accumulating for a lot of New England. And I think we could have a lot more of that on the way throughout the month of November. All right. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Let's get right into the comment of the day. And I asked you guys, when do you think the Northeast will see their next snowstorm? And everything weather said, I think the Northeast and New England will see their next snowfall on November 15th. You guys know I like these oddly specific ones because it's fun to come look back. So I wanted to pick this one for the comment of the day, November 15th. We'll see if you were right. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our diamond patrons. Uh, Michael Cotalesa, Mad Birds, Rosemary Haynes, Alicia Davis, Catbite, Terry Curtis, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mad Birds, I forgot if I said yours already or not, Kellen Manhart, Michael Buell, Mariah Vieira, and Mark J. Alongside our Platinum patrons, Adam S., Donna Carnes, Alan Belemo, da Dovi Nagel, James Wade, Larry LaPan, and Cameron Marshall. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. If you would like to get a shout out on this patron end screen every single video, you can do so by checking out our Patreon in the description and the pinned comment down below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.